Freedom is a privilege. Yours has been revoked. You seek to earn it back. Then prove your worth. Lest your adversaries prove theirs first. Your burning pyre is your only hope. Don't let them snuff it out. Now go forth in glory, or be banished here forever. Uh, familiar with it and less familiar, because even some of our most dedicated fans, sometimes when they see our games, they're like, what? You know, uh, this is intriguing, but what is going on here, really? Because we like to uh, make our games uh, rather mysterious. So uh, P Pyre is a big departure for us. It's a, we consider it a party-based RPG. Uh, it's not an action RPG like our past two games. Uh, in this game, it's about leading your band of exiles to freedom through a series of mystical competitions spread across this vast uh, purgatory setting in which your characters have been cast down. So over the course of the game, you'll have to search the stars to discover which of these celestial landmarks is kind of calling to you, make your way to those locations, then confront a uh, colorful series of adversaries there uh, to determine who uh, may kind of return in glory uh, and, and uh, regain their freedom and who uh, may remain in exile until the end of their days. So those are kind of the, the stakes of the competition. And uh, I, I think one of the interesting things about the game that we haven't uh, talked about too much until now, in part because we've been uh, building it out still and kind of wanted to make sure it was uh, fully realized was... Uh, uh, this aspect that the game there's there's no uh, there's no point in the game where you lose progress. There's no kind of game over screen. We wanted to make a game that had all the kind of challenge and excitement and intensity uh, of uh, of a fast paced action game, uh, but that didn't put up those roadblocks where you might be getting kind of really excited for where the story is going to go next, but then you hit a brick wall because you're just bashing your head against a boss fight. You can't move forward. So we wanted to make a game where the story advances no matter whether you uh, fail or prevail, and that's kind of central to the themes of the story and everything. That's, uh, you know, in, in, in all of our past games, we've explored how our, our narrative components and our gameplay can really uh, coexist in harmony and work with each other and uh, uh, location is is a place called the Cairn of Haub. Uh, this is uh, kind of on on the on the precipice of a uh, pretty dark place in this mystical purgatory called the Downside. So that's uh, we've actually never shown this location before. It's uh, kind of pr pretty uh, pretty foreboding looking, I suppose. So on the left side we have a triumvirate called the Nightwings in blue, and on the right we have a triumvirate called the Accusers in orange. And Amir is going to tell you a little bit about what is uh, what is even going on here, what's uh, what what the object of this ritual is. So you know, Pyre's battle system is party based, just like the whole game is. So you field a team of three, and you control them all in real time. Um, basically, you only control one uh, character at a time, one exile at a time, because only one of them is permitted to move at a time. And you manage them and move them around uh, the, the competition in, in real time. So uh, the object of the right is to go and grasp that celestial orb you see there in the middle there and use it to douse the opposing pyre. And uh, we're going to do that by uh, grabbing it and running it all the way into the opposing pyre and boom. Once a character does that, they deal some damage to the pyre and slowly whittle it down. And, and then they remain banished. Uh, bas basically, that character, uh, Ruki, once he doused the pyre, he's now banished uh, temporarily, basically for this next round, uh, until one side or the other can, can douse uh, the pyre yet again, and then Ruki will be back. Uh, we'll be able to uh, kind of go and take Re another stab at it. Participate again. Yeah, we have, you know, in Pyre, there's these auras that surround your character. They serve both a defensive and offensive purpose. And we can see here, when you touch the uh, opposing aura, you're banished for a time. And you can see those countdown timers in the bottom that show you how long you might be out for. So there's a lot of sort of back and forth of trying to make sure that you're able to clear the field of opposing exiles so you can try and uh, sort of uh, jam the orb into the Pyre. Yeah, and and uh, as one of the one of the kind of big twists on it is that once you grab uh, the orb, it absorbs all of your aura, so it leaves uh, your current exile very vulnerable uh, to to being uh, to being banished. So there's uh, you have to yeah kind of carefully uh, make your way down down the other side of the uh, down the other side of the arena and and uh, kind of find the right moment. And you have uh, a variety of moves at your disposal to kind of outmaneuver and outsmart your opponent. 
uh, you'll see that each character has like a essentially a stamina bar beneath them. So they that governs their ability to to sprint and use kind of very fast uh, fast maneuvers and also and also to leap when they when they jump up uh, or or their kind of racial equivalent of jumping, uh, which uh, you'll you'll see in a bit. Um, they they can evade uh, the adversary's aura. So there's a lot of kind of mind games of trying to bait out the other player into running at you, and then you jump right over them and. And uh, and things of that nature, kind of a balance between uh, really like uh, really kind of timing based, uh, tight close quarters uh, battling with the opponent, and but also this almost like a strategic level uh, mind game of trying to uh, out outwit uh, your your opponent's kind of entire group. Yeah, if you played our previous games before, you know that you know we you know we love combining uh, sort of real time pleasures along with you know stuff that's strategic or, or tactical in nature. Uh, as we've done in, in Bastion and Transistor before it, or after it. In this particular case, you're, of course, managing multiple characters at the same time. It was part of the thing that was really appealing to us. We have a bigger game with a larger cast of characters that you can get closer to, but you're also uh, coordinating them both outside these rights and inside these rights, um, which is a big part of both the campaign and in versus mode. Yeah, th that's right. So it, it creates a lot of these really interesting considerations, uh, we, we hope, in, in uh, you know, v very early on, uh, you end up having to decide which of your characters uh, to even select uh, mm -hmm. to participate in these rights because only three uh, exiles can participate. It has to be exactly three exiles who participate. So on the one hand, you have these gameplay considerations of you know which characters just happen to work best together, but then there you know you may have uh, certain emotional considerations. Characters who uh, get along better with each other want to participate with each other. Characters. Uh, who who might not uh, see eye to eye, uh, you, you know, quite as much, and whether to field them together. So uh, we we hope that over the course of the game, that'll lend itself to just a lot of uh, kind of really rich uh, decision making around this like central uh, battle system in and, the game. And because Pyre is a party based RPG, you know, managing your party uh, is more than just figuring out who's going to actually be fielded and and go and take part in the ritual. There's also uh, the ability to equip them, to level them out, to outfit them in different ways. Our games have always sort of had that RPG element that allows you to kind of configure the game and configure the characters to your play style. And so it's really important for us in this game that you're able to do that as well, both in the uh, campaign and in the versus mode. It looks like we have a winner. Oh, wow. Well. Who was that? That was uh, Gavin uh, crushing Michael's hopes and dreams already. So, so that was, yeah, so the Nightwings happened to prevail there. Mm -hmm. We didn't get a chance to talk about how all the characters in that right were, were, were different, even though there were characters... Uh, of the same uh, race on each side, though we can we can dive into that uh, a little bit more here in the next right. Uh, so we are. Um, uh, by the way, for those of you uh, just joining us, thank you very much. We're we're live from Supergiant HQ here in San Francisco. I'm Greg. This is Amir. Hello. Uh, we're talking about Pyre, uh, mm -hmm. and we're showing you uh, the versus mode live right now. This is, in fact, um, we've never shown this before. This is the versus mode itself. Uh, this, these are many of the options available to you. We're not going to talk about all of them uh, right here and now, but you can kind of take a gander and, and absorb some of it. Uh, so we're switching to a different environment called the Spring of Jomur. Uh, we're sticking to the Nightwings and the Accusers. What about um, our music? Should we switch up our yeah, music? Yeah, we could we could switch our music. Yeah, you'll be able to choose from different. Yeah, we yeah. could go with that one. Yeah, the sounds old, good. Um, and uh, we. And I guess we're going to turn, uh, we will toggle off the, uh, this, the sermon intro this time around. Yep. Um, so, th yeah, there are a variety of ways to customize, uh, uh, to customize the versus mode experience. Um, by default, the characters all have their own uh, set of abilities that, that, uh, that, that kind of governs uh, how, they're, how they're unique. But you could also customize them here with different equipment and choose the abilities for them if you so, if you so desire. But let's, let's just go right in. Uh, to the next right. All right, we are so. At this, this is Spring of Jomer, yeah, right? Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> yeah. And this one, uh, it, it, this is kind of a larger and more more kind of a water soaked environment. Now let's let's pause a moment here too, because this is this is a lot to take in. This is something we've never shown before as well. This is essentially the the preparation phase uh, before just about every right. Uh, this is the the character select screen. Here you have access to a wide variety of information. Uh, we've never had like, we've never ha one of the things we've sort of dreamed about having in our <laughs> in our like RPG making aspirations here at yeah. Supergiant is just like, just a uh, just a character sheet for yeah. our for our characters. Yeah. Just like 
what are, what are their attributes, what's their name, what's their biography. So we have all that stuff here for 20 plus uh, different characters. We only have some of them uh, available for you here. We don't want to give too much away. There's one uh, for those of you uh, astute viewers that we've never revealed before that we will be revealing now for the first time. This is Pamitha Thane. She is uh, from a race known as the Harps, uh, which are these, these kind of winged uh, creatures who have been enemies of the Commonwealth uh, from from which most of the other uh, exiles have been uh, cast out. Uh, so she joins the group, you know, well, you'll find out why she joins <laughs> the group, uh, but, but normally she would not be interacting with a lot of these other characters. But we are going to pick her versus mode is kind of a dream match scenario where you can uh, pick uh, whichever characters you want, um, you know, even though they might normally uh, hate each other's guts. <laughs> um, so, so Michael here is going to pick uh, Mr. Ignarius, uh, one of the larger characters in the game. Yeah, I mean, part of the part of the joy of this and this kind of multiplayer mode, um, this head to head local multiplayer mode is we really we really looked at games that that we love that had big, awesome stories that that you didn't necessarily want to play the versus mode necessarily until you played through the campaign. And, and we kind of took that approach with this as well, you know, introduce you to all these characters and then have the ability to extend your play experience by 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 jumping into versus mode afterwards. Yeah, and uh, of course you could jump into versus mode at any time. That was something that was really important to us also, where like, we, we thought a lot about, you know, oh, should we unlock the characters over time and stuff? And what, we settled on something really simple, which is just, if you, if you try to access versus mode uh, early on in the game, it just gives you like a little notice saying, hey, you might reveal characters that you haven't met yet in the campaign, but you could just skip that if, if that's not something you're concerned with. Uh, but but everything is unlocked from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not you don't have to go through and kind of painstakingly unlock access to what we think is just a really cool mode that we've been yeah. having a ton of fun playing. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about Pamitha here. Uh, she's very different than the other characters. The the first three characters are it kind of fit the small, medium, large. You know, they're they're the kind of introductory characters to get into the game uh, relatively simply. But Pamitha's abilities are a lot different. She can't jump like the other characters, but she can fly yeah. and she could fly for uh, quite a while before having to uh, come back down uh, to earth and she could yeah fly right over the heads of her adversaries and just sail right in uh, to the pyre with the orb there and so it makes her seem very very powerful and in fact she is but uh, your opponents do have a way to counteract that which is that they can jump themselves and kind of knock her back down to earth uh, jumping is the way to uh, counter other uh, other kind of characters jumping in this game, yeah. uh, and you'll you'll find those kind of mid-air collisions happen naturally here. Uh, you'll see that Pamitha's aura is also kind of of a different nature. It's like uh, just uh, true to her different nature as a, a different kind of a creature. Really, it's it's uh, got a different shape, uh, sort of suggesting suggesting her differences. Yeah, and she could dash around really quickly. Uh, she's kind of a uh, a, a more maneuverable, more kind of technical characters than, than than some of the others. Yeah, the you know the the other characters that we're showing here too. We've got uh, two curs now who are playing on the side of the accusers. Uh, those are much faster characters uh, with a kind of slidier, a little bit harder to control because they they don't have much self control really as 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 exiles in this universe. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but what's kind of fun about customizing your team in versus mode is you're able to kind of stack them however you want and put together the team that makes uh, that kind of fits your play style and sensibilities. You'll have that in the campaign as well, and that'll be one of those considerations in addition to the characters and their desire to to participate in the rights in order to get out, there's also, you know, your question of how you want to play and how you want to put together your your band of exiles uh, that fits the way you like to approach the competition. Yeah, and once we get a... Uh, uh, oh, I guess we haven't shown Pamitha's uh, aura cast yet. Oh, yeah. She has a... You know, the other characters we've seen, they just kind of uh, can fire their aura like a projectile attack, whereas... Uh, uh, Pamitha just essentially has this tackle, like an aura tackle that, in fact, uh, while she's doing it, she's immune uh, to to, uh, to adversary's auras. So she could just kind of bulldoze uh, right through uh, her opponents with that. Um, you know, again, like changing her play style quite a bit in comparison to the others. So we'll see. I, I think um, Gavin and Michael are gonna uh, take the gloves off. Yeah, <laughs> take the gloves off a little bit here. So yeah. you'll you'll see you'll see them in action. Yeah. Uh, one of the other uh, details is that. Um, different exiles deal essentially different amounts of damage uh, to the to the adversary's pyre. So it, it's kind of uh, often depends on how how kind of big and uh, essentially how glorious they are. <laughs> we have a, one of the attributes is called glory that yeah. directly determines uh, how much uh, damage uh, an exile deals to their pyre. But typically, uh, the 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 kind of faster an exile is, 
the le uh, you know if it's easier for them to douse the adversary's pyre typically they won't do quite as much damage to it in one blow whereas with these big demons if they could get in there they really uh take a take a big chunk out of it um we uh we've shown that you know you you see it's kind of a demon on demon violence there on the left we have uh jodariel and on the right we have ignarius uh what makes them they have different attributes even though they're like they're they're since they share a race, they, they play uh, similarly. They have access to a different, uh, like a similar set of moves, but they have different masteries and different attributes and things of that nature to kind of uh, change uh, aspects of their play style. So in, in the other example here with uh, Ruki and, and uh, Barker, who's the other Kerr, uh, Ruki is able to uh, double jump in the air, so he's very maneuverable while um, uh, basically while jumping around, whereas Barker... Uh, has a super fast sprint. He's the, I believe he's the single fastest yeah. uh, character in the game kind of once he gets going. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the ways where even when we have characters who share uh, the same race, they still play uh, quite a bit differently. And that's, um, yeah, in the campaign, you'll be able to customize that even more because they, they have access to more abilities than you'll actually be able to, you know, sort of have it equipped on them at any given time. Why don't we talk a little bit about the Spring of Jomer and just sort of the world of Pyre where they are, where they've been cast down in the downside and, and how that might sort of differ from our previous worlds. Yeah, yeah, there's, you know, one of the, we, like in, in Bastion, we made this uh, kind of fantasy frontier world and we, we love creating that world. Uh, but uh, with, you know, then we went to like a science fiction world in Transistor, but we were really excited to go back to a fantasy setting um, with with Pyre, but to sort of approach it from a, a more from the high fantasy direction of like a really old feeling world with a, a variety of characters of all shapes and sizes in a way that kind of wouldn't have made sense. And the the world of Bastion is more uh, a bit more modern feeling. There's like muskets and and rifles and things of that nature. Whereas in Pyre, uh, it's a very kind of old feeling world with these uh, races with a lot of history um, and the setting, the downside, this purgatory setting with its own uh, history. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll just, uh, it, it, even, even as a setting, it kind of gave us license to just have a lot of different types of places and climates uh, and, and uh, atmospheres kind of uh, within it. And this, this locale is, is kind of pretty early on. It's still when uh, the downside, you know, hasn't quite shown its, uh, its nastiest side <laughs> so it's a little bit more more pristine here but the 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 previous location that we shown was a little a little bit more sinister as you're starting to get into some of the uh n neither reaches of uh, of the uh, um of the setting yeah. Uh, yeah so how's it they're they're both pretty close here you see that they're um uh, you could see the the progress of of the right uh, by the numbers kind of in the respective corners so uh it's down to it's down to just 10 uh, pyre health on the Nightwing side. So if uh, if Michael there can douse the pyre once more, uh, he shall prevail. But it's oh. really... But <laughs> Gavin fiendishly stole it from him. By flying, cruelly flying stole it from Pamitha him. and using her to douse the pyre there. Yeah. yeah, thanks to the efforts of Pamitha there. Uh, Pamitha and uh, Joe Dariel there to, to Pamitha's left, um, mm -hmm. to Pamitha's right, rather. Mm -hmm. they, yep. they might normally not... Uh, uh, interact uh, quite the way that they did there, but uh, yeah, they were able to work together and, and succeed much, much to Michael's chagrin. So I think we're going to jump into another uh, right here, and we're also going to start taking questions from people who have any questions. Um, yeah. Some of them have come up. Why don't you guys configure the next one? And I think for the next one, these guys are just going to pick uh, whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and put, together, uh, put together the triumvirate that might finally allow Michael and the, <laughs> and the accusers to prevail um, uh, and of over course, Gavin. And we're only, uh, you know, gonna, we're not going to reveal too much here of versus mode. There's many more environments. There's obviously many more characters. So this is just a taste. We want you to be able to uh, experience most of this for the first time uh, when the game is uh, finally available on, on July 25th. That was our big news today that game is almost done. We can yeah. finally show more of it. We can finally talk more about it. Um, talk about the the campaign, show you versus mode, show you more of these characters and and all that stuff. Yeah, so by all means, uh, fire away with with some questions, and we will uh, we will respond. Yeah, I got I got one or two here. So someone was asking what you know what the relentless vigor text that keeps coming out oh, yes. is on Jody, and we can talk a little bit about her mastery. Yeah, relentless vigor. That is that is the name of one of Jodariel's uh, masteries. So that's one of the you know we talked about the difference between her and how Ignarius plays. So uh, Jodariel. 
has uh, this powerful kind of lunging ability. Normally she's very slow, but she can lunge forward and, and take out her, her adversaries that way. Um, normally that drains all of her stamina, but with one of her masteries called Relentless Vigor, if she banishes an adversary, she regains all of her stamina instantly, so she could press the attack that way and basically keep uh, bulldozing through uh, her foes. So that's an, that's an ability that she has by default in versus mode, and, and Ignarius does not have, so it like significantly changes the way she plays uh, compared, compared with Ignarius. So you'll see that kind of floating text pop up that's showing you uh, that one of your uh, abilities has taken effect that has some kind of situational uh, impact there. Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple other questions coming in. Uh, one of them is, does it have online multiplayer? I think that's been asked a couple times. Yes, uh, uh, Pyre is a local two-player head-to-head uh, -head game. It does not have uh, online play. Online play is something we uh, investigated uh, and, and tested quite, uh, quite closely, but in the end it was something that we felt that in order to kind of meet the, the high standard of today when it comes to online play, it has to be the entire focus of the game. Uh, mm -hmm. But the focus of Pyre's development is absolutely uh, the, the single-player campaign. It's our biggest campaign ever. It's the kind of experience that we think you, you will have come to expect from us at Supergiant. We did not like kind of set out to make whatever, just like a multiplayer-focused game. And, and yet, uh, we had such a great time like, pl like basically testing this game head-to-head uh, -head and, and playing uh, what became versus mode that we're like, we have, to, we have to do something with this. So the right decision for us was to, was to focus on local play and, and, and put this out there. And, and uh, you know, you could play it against the computer or against another player. So uh, even if uh, you don't have, you know, someone nearby who's going who's gonna to play with you, there's just a ton of uh, lasting value just playing against the computer. Like uh, a lot of us before Supergiant, uh, several of us worked on uh, actually real-time strategy games of all things <laughs> on the on the yeah. Command and Conquer series, and it was a, it was really fun to play um, RTS games just in in skirmish mode, just kind of throwing down uh, against the computer, uh, configuring you know playing as different factions and so on. So basically, Pyre has the equivalent of that mm -hmm. to provide a lot of lasting value on top of the campaign. Yeah, there's a there's also just sort of like a the fun of putting together a team and that you could never put together in the campaign, <laughs> which can only really happen in versus mode, which is where you can actually use the adversaries that, that uh, normally you, they just want to beat you in the campaign. And here you can kind of, kind of pair them up. Yeah. It's create the, your fantasy scenarios. That's right. It's the kind of dream match scenario where, uh, yeah, characters that, that aren't playable uh, in the campaign that, that um, we, that was another thing where we, we debated for a long time, kind of what the, versus mode cast of characters were going to be because there were there were kind of like there were uh, a lot of different like schools of thought on what made the most sense but the thing that emerged as just kind of the most exciting was was like hey let's just let's just let you play as these characters that you normally can't play as it's almost the feel of like oh wow I could I could play as this like boss character or something like that like yeah. that kind of mm -hmm. feel to it and um, kind of uh, I think it's even very much in, in theme with the campaign just kind of getting in everybody's heads and being able to see the world from their uh, point of view and try to prevail in the in the rights as all these different characters. There's w one uh, actually like along those lines, a really fun way to play the game is, you you know, in addition to picking your triumvirate and configuring it, you could also just kind of go all random and just pick random characters and have at it. And we have a we have a lot of fun just just playing that way and mm -hmm. seeing who like which weird combination of characters will will end up getting. Uh, th there's no combination of characters that like isn't they're all individually viable it's mm. just the strategies are really different depending on who you end up with so it uh, it just uh changes quite a bit depending on who you end up with yeah. even if the combination of characters uh, you know may not be exactly optimal yeah so the questions are piling up cool so you're gonna i'm gonna try and slay some of these a little bit a little bit uh so we can get some of them uh cleared so the, one of them is will the ost be available day one Yes, Pyre has a soundtrack that's over 90 minutes. It's done by our composer, Darren Korb, who was the composer and audio director for Bastion and Transistor, and it will be available day one, and you can actually pre-order it now on Steam uh, if you are so inclined. Yeah, we're really a... Uh, yeah. Well, we could go off about the soundtrack, but yeah. the, the audio has always been really important to our games. Uh, Pyre is... Uh, definitely no exception in that regard. Um, I, I'm really, really excited for some of the stuff we're doing with the music and audio. Yeah, I can't wait for people to experience yeah. that aspect. And speaking of audio, uh, there's some questions about voice acting, voice actors. Uh, yes. Number number first question, most important one to get out of the way, uh, is Logan Cunningham in this game? Yeah, is is he ever yeah, uh, is yeah. the answer to that. Yeah, yeah. Lo Logan... Uh, 
I, I, I think we kept Logan plenty busy on this one. Uh, we're, we're blabbing over it right now, but uh, Logan is essentially the, the character who is emceeing uh, these rites as you play. It's a fully kind of dynamic uh, announcer uh, character who is also central to the story. Uh, you'll hear him, and he has all new kind of totally different content in versus mode in addition to the campaign, so you'll be hearing uh, plenty of this character uh, that, but that's just one of Logan's characters. Uh, folks are often really surprised to hear that this is, in fact, Logan because he sounds so different from the understated character from Transistor or from Rux uh, from Bastion. But yeah, we we love working with Logan, and uh, th this this game is just another uh, expression of how much uh, just how much range he he has as an actor. Yeah, and you know, because we're super giant and like to keep the team together, um, we have a larger voice acting cast. It looks like. Oh my God, Michael won. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Accusers prevail. The, the, with this, uh, yeah. with this heavy hitting team there. <laughs> well done, Michael. Um, I'm, I'm happy um, to see that. So, so yeah, it's a you know larger cast, uh, and and that includes the, the voice actors, and uh, you know you'll you'll get to see it if you make it to the credits. Um, but certainly some familiar voices there as well from from our previous titles. Um, if you enjoyed if you enjoyed the characters in Transistor. Yeah, I think we're gonna let's 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 keep going because yeah. we've got some more questions piling up. So you guys can keep throwing Hit down. We can rights. we can. You want to do? Um, you want to do no customize, all random? Uh, or we, no, because yeah, yeah, that's yeah, gonna yeah. that's gonna reveal. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, never not mind. <laughs> but but uh, we they could just keep picking uh, d different different yeah. folks and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let's go hit the next thing. Or we. Yeah, cool. And this is this is skipping the sermon. Yeah, the mm. the intro. So this is kind of the faster. You could you could just jump into versus mode matches really really quickly uh, in this fashion. We wanted to make it just really really like quick and easy just to the the way the way i like playing games like this is just you you got your buddy or you're playing against a computer you just want to loop through really quickly and not not be stuck on like long loading screens or whatever so we just try to make it really simple to keep playing kind of as much as you want you can you can dive in and out of versus mode basically at any time in the campaign it's not like uh it's not like some totally it, it is a separate mode but uh it's all it's all very kind of readily available uh at whatever point you want to access it uh during during your campaign play yeah there's a there's a question here about the uh throwing the orb versus versus uh running it in which is something we can show and talk about a little bit more once we get into the into the game we can talk a little bit more about the mechanics but uh you've seen when when an exile goes and takes the orb and and physically runs it into the pyre what ends up happening is they're banished for the subsequent round if you take the orb and you toss it in, which we'll sh which we will not, <laughs> will not show, show. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. fine because we're yeah because this is all live and happening right now. Um, if you take if you take the orb and you and you toss it, you fling it into the pyre. Um, so Barker just did that. Now Barker won't be out the subsequent round. So. Yeah, it, which is a pretty you, you know pretty big advantage. You're yeah. not you're not down a, a character um, when you do that. But mm -hmm. but flinging in the orb, uh, it takes time to prepare, mm -hmm. and and you'll see the, like a, a number kind of begins to tick up as you as you do that, and that's d essentially determining the strength of the mm -hmm. of the attack. Yeah. Uh, when you when you dive uh, when you plunge into the pyre, it's it's always at full strength, but when you fling the orb, it has to charge up. So mm -hmm. sometimes you could kind of chip away um, at the pyre that way, uh, mm -hmm. kind of for the for the tactical benefit of not losing your character, yeah. and it could lend itself to some really like interesting situations late uh, late during a right when you know their pyre might just be down to kind of five uh, health or something like that, and yeah. all it takes is just a little bit of a fling of the orb uh, just to just to kind of close out yeah. yeah close out the right so uh, we we get into a lot of interesting situations with that sort of thing yep, yeah there's, there's another fling yeah, Tamitha flinging it in um, so someone is asking me which is an inside joke um, what is the most important thing to do in Diablo 2 which is a reference <laughs> of course to a to a YouTube video that I may or may not be involved in uh, and the answer to that is, of course, to bind those keys, which is relevant to Pyre because Pyre has like fully customizable, <laughs> remappable controls on yes. the PC. So I brought it back. Um, yeah, but we've always, you know, for PC players out there who who want the ability to customize their game, customize their controls, whether on a gamepad or keyboard, uh, we know that's super important because we're we're you know we're PC game players as well, and uh, we're going to make sure all that stuff is there for you when you uh, when you pick up Pyre if you y choose to play it there. Yeah, even just in general, like just the overall accessibility of the game in 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 every sense of that term is, is something that we value a great deal. So whether it's something like configuring your controls or just configuring the the difficulty of the game uh, to to what is a, is a setting that, that that feels right to you, or uh, you know, as we talked about earlier, the the fact that you 
you literally like cannot game over in this game. The story advances whether you succeed or fail. So you're gonna get through to the end if you just keep playing, um, even though there's plenty of challenge along the way. Mm -hmm. That was something that was really important to us because we want players to be able to experience the story, experience their version of the story more importantly, and yeah. just kind of have their own uh, journey, you know, to freedom as these characters. So yeah, it's fr uh, it was. It also was uh, when we started working with the concept, the idea that failure is like a part of the whole experience yeah. and not a thing that completely resets and and reboots the experience. Uh, it made us think about the whole game, the whole game design, the structure of the game, um, the the characters, the kinds of situations you get in. Everything changed. Yeah, yeah no, that's absolutely right. That was like where it, it, that's where it it came from for us because we're we're like just. Even thematically, it's this story about these characters. You know, they, they, they've started off on a bad foot. They've already been exiled, and they're having to kind of... Uh, they're having to struggle through this situation and kind of sometimes make up for, for things that they wish, you know, hadn't happened to them mm -hmm. in the past. So, so it, it just made sense to have a game that was, like, tolerant of, of these characters uh, failing from time to time. Yeah. And we, we... Just thinking about it honestly, you know, and... In real life, we often learn, you know, there's the saying that which does not kill us makes us stronger. It's like these these characters, as long as they can kind of live to fight another day, they're gaining enlightenment. They're mm -hmm. they're they're getting more experienced and 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 stronger and kind of learning to deal with the situation that they're in. And uh, that's kind of why we were so uh, interested in this type of premise mm -hmm. uh, for for what even the kind of battle system is. You know, if it was going to be this highly lethal, you know, kind of brutal game of of lopping people's heads off or something like that. The problem with uh, dying is you don't learn from that. You don't come back. <laughs> you don't come yeah. back from that. And you know the way yeah. games handle that is like they take they take you out of it, right? You you die, but you as a player have learned something. And you 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 hit your game over screen. You kind of learn you know what killed you in that situation. You restart mm -hmm. and you move forward. But we were really interested in like a narrative that. Um, where, where the characters can experience that themselves and kind of pick themselves up after a defeat and keep going. And the question tied to that is, um, does the game have multiple endings? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> does it, does it uh, I think similar to the Logan question, does it ever? Yeah. Uh, it it, it uh, definitely, uh, we don't want to kind of give too much away about the, about the ending, but uh, for sure uh, it, it made sense to us in this game that, that the ending of the game is going to kind of reflect the path you took to get there. Yeah. Um, so it it was only it only made sense for the ending to be uh, to to vary based on uh, how how you played the game. So so you can you can look forward to that. Again, we don't want to give too much away, but uh, yeah. we it, it's always the endings of our games have been really really important to us in each of the games we've made. We want uh, players to feel like it was worth their time and effort to to we we just really value players' investment of of just their time in playing our game, we want to make sure that they feel like they they kind of earned a suitable kind of recognition of of what they've done by the time they get to the end. So we've, uh, you know, that's been, we've expressed that differently, obviously, in both uh, Bastion and Transistor, and, and you'll experience something different in Pyre likewise, but hopefully it's something that, you feel uh, is is really uh, fitting to this game. Oh, there's uh, Ignarius showing off as he <laughs> seals the deal there. Yep, yeah. that's a cool. That's a good looking group there. Yeah. So, so you'll be able to yeah pick it all. We're only showing the Nightwings and the Accusers. It's a it's a cosmetic choice in versus mode, but there's a uh, many other triumvirates uh, to choose from, uh, and uh, you'll you'll yeah you'll get to. You'll get to know all of them uh, during the course of the game. Yeah, so... Um, We're going to do... Yeah, let's time for one more. Squeeze out one more because we got yeah. questions and, and uh, we got some other ones that are worth talking about. So I don't know if you guys want to head back to, to the Cairn because um, we started there and we can sort of, as, as Greg was implying, it's, 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 at the, it's at the point where you're in your journey to the, through the downside where it starts to take a turn for the darker um, in, in terms of stuff. Yeah, yeah we'll go. Let's we'll do go. it. Yeah, we'll do sermon intros. Check out the. Yeah, let's actually have a listen. This is like di yeah, we yeah, can turn we it up maybe for people who want to hear. Welcome, exiles. And this is Logan Cunningham. You heed the summons to the Cairn of Haub. Here you shall be tested by your adversary. The stars themselves shall be your witnesses. Nightwings, stand ready. Accusers, stand prepared. And that's a, uh, that's a highly. Uh, there's a lot of variety there. It's unique to the to the triumvirates in the, 
in the right. It's unique to the location that you're in and so on and so forth. Uh, again, versus mode is one of those things. It's designed to be played a lot. So we wanted to make sure that the voiceover, uh, it kind of did its job to hold up its end of the bargain, kind of provided a, a lot of kind of cool stuff for you to hear. Yeah, we haven't shown, so we have those attributes at the top. We can briefly. Yeah, some uh, people were asking about hope and, and, and yeah. some of these other things. They're wondering what they, what they, how they affect exiles. Yep, there, there are these four uh, basic attributes. Uh, glory is essentially uh, represents how much damage you do. Uh, presence uh, determines the size of your aura. Um, and uh, quickness determines, uh, as as is suggested, how quickly how quickly you move your movement speed, and hope is how quickly you return from banishment. Those are kind of the the basic uh, ideas there. They're you know they're meant to be expressive about the characters' uh, different personalities and so on. We also have yeah their master. We haven't shown uh, talismans on the right. There's this kind of empty spot uh, for for the characters' uh, talisman pocket. By default, you don't mess with those in versus mode, but you can uh, you can equip them if you so choose. So uh, talismans. Uh, essentially are like equipment. They give characters access to different abilities or they can shore up some of their weaknesses. Uh, they're, there's just a, they're just another sort of channel to, to configure your characters uh, however you so choose. And, and talismans uh, over the course of the campaign are also upgradable in themselves. So not only can you like invest in your characters, but you can invest in, in your talismans and kind of swap them back and forth between your favorite characters, uh, that sort of thing, just to keep uh, keep the, you know, uh, we we wanted to have all those kind of juicy RPG systems uh, interacting with each other in a cool way. Yeah. Um, so some other questions. This one this one's gonna be tough. Which is of the characters we're looking at here, uh, who is your favorite? Who? Oh, Lord. Um, so yeah. So I'm a I'm a rookie man, but rookie's not. Yeah, rookie's up there. He's currently on the accusers, um, which is unfortunate because Michael Michael's lost streak. <laughs> is, is 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 not good but um yeah i love rookie's double jump which michael just pulled off there for a score yep. i mean for a dowsing uh, well done well done michael um uh but yeah so I, he's one of my favorites he's 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 been fun since he was uh uh like a not modeled barely yeah, <laughs> barely yeah. textured uh things sliding across the screen so uh I, I have a special place in my heart for rookie yeah rookie was like one of the first characters where i think it, on on every kind of along every channel as we were figuring out what the what the tone of the world was going to be um how it was going to play he was one of the characters that just kind of came together early on and when mm. we when we saw him and we're like okay yeah that's mm. We, we we like where this is. We don't yeah. know where the rest of this is going to lead us, but we like where this is going. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in for some reason and hearing us talk <laughs> about mustachioed dogs uh, taking part in an ancient uh, competition, we are showing uh, Pyre. We're super giant games creators of Bastion Transistor, and we have the news today, which is that Pyre will be available on July 25th, and you can pre-order it uh, pre-order it today. Some people are still asking questions about platforms, so the platforms that Pyre will be available on at launch our PlayStation 4 and Steam and on Steam it will be on Windows and Linux. Yeah, that's that's right. That's our that's our big news today. Yeah, j just that the game is almost done. Uh, yeah. we we've been kind of we keep pretty quiet during development. We poke our heads out, you know, when it comes to uh, certain events like PAX, um, uh, like when we announce our game. We've only announced, you know, 3 games in total. Um we've been around since uh 2009 um, yeah. this is our third game that's almost done <laughs> yeah so these games take us a while we kind of our team of 12 people we just throw everything at each game that we work on kind of reinvest everything it's thanks to uh mm -hmm. it's thanks to the success of our previous games that we were able to just kind of keep going and and make stuff you know in mm. in the fashion that we do using the process that we do uh yeah. and um yeah you will you will soon see what that means in the case of pyre which is this pretty big departure for us both uh just structurally uh gameplay wise and yet it has uh i think it has uh the you know for for folks who've enjoyed our games in the past it has the 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 kind of the presentation aspects the yeah. focus on narrative the the kind of action-packed uh, gameplay all those things are there just in a in yeah. a pretty different uh fashion yeah the, i mean so yeah. the you know the art you're seeing here um you know is art directed by by gen z who also makes almost all the the 2d elements josh uh who did the visual effects on transistor and the menus and the ui and all that kind of stuff he's 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 doing the beautiful pyre flames and auras and everything else you see on the screen and finally camilo who's our animator who brought red to life 
uh, and made made all those functions feel uh, unique and interesting with 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 the way she moved and animated uh, animates all the the characters that you see on the screen here and and so it's cool to see them kind of you know personally because we've been together for so long see them grow as artists um, and exceed work that we were really really proud of three years ago and put it into this game yeah it's uh, I think that was just you know one of the things we kept coming back to is like we so have enjoyed just kind of the the world building aspects of our games, just creating the characters, the setting and everything. So one of the earliest ideas on this game is just like, what would, what would it take? What would it look like to make a game that just had more characters in it? What would, what would the context be for a game with more characters and what would the setting be and so on? And that, that was something that um, first and foremost attracted us to the idea of this game. So it's, it's pretty cool to be here now with uh, we, we definitely have uh, a few uh, more, uh, weeks of hard work ahead of us, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely the light is there at the end of the tunnel and just to see that it's taken shape and we have this big cast now of 20 plus different characters, each with their own stories and motivations and relationships with all the other characters and all that kind of stuff. And plus they all play differently, all, all that stuff that I think we've always pushed for with all of our previous games and in mm -hmm. different fashions that's kind of pushed even farther uh, with, with this game. Yeah. Um, for those of you asking about other platforms, um, you know, we, we super appreciate that our games have had an audience in all the places they've released, whether, you know, it's on, on iPad or tablets or mobile or, or other consoles and all that kind of stuff. Um, Pyre is going to be launching on, on PlayStation 4 and Steam. Uh, and beyond that, uh, we, we, we have no plans, um, but certainly we haven't ruled anything out. Um, so uh, for us, it's really important because we're a really, really small team. In fact, half our engineering team right now is just <laughs> is just playing Pyre in yep. here. Uh, so it's really important for us to stay focused so we can deliver the highest quality experience um, uh, on the platforms that we initially choose. Yeah, one of the you know it, it, being being small uh, as a team of of twelve, 12 people, it has both its strengths and its weaknesses, right? Like yeah. the the strengths are that we can make the kind of games that we do. We could just have have uh, a situation where everyone working on the game has a lot of investment, like a lot of responsibility to how the game ends up and really kind of put their own mark on it. Uh, but, but you know, it does mean we have to be really uh, careful uh, about prioritizing what we do, not not stretch ourselves too thin and, and just kind of make sure we do uh, at least one thing, uh, typically no more than one thing at a time so much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it definitely means prioritizing. And we've had a great experience with, uh, with Transistor launching our game on on both uh, PlayStation 4 and, and Steam at the same time. That was something we felt that we could handle yeah. having uh, done it once before. So yeah. it's definitely what made the most sense uh, for Pyre. And then beyond that, yeah, we we don't we don't plan too far ahead because uh, what matters is is what folks think of this game. And, and we, we will just kind of see what happens. We're going to make the best game we can and kind of take it from there. See see what everyone has to say. Uh, that's that's been our strategy in the past with yeah. both Bastion and Transistor. <laughs> yeah. uh, we put everything we had just into into making a good game in the first place, and then uh, hopefully, um, yep. you know, from there people will be interested in seeing it come to more places. We can figure that out as as we as we go along. Yeah. Speaking of another another sort of uh, related but not quite the same question is about localization. Some you know we know we have players all over the world, and we've really appreciated that. And so some people are asking, you know, at launch, will you have uh, translations like you did uh, on your previous titles? Yeah. So that is a good question. And uh, the so so what happened during the course of development is it became uh, it became clear that the stuff we were doing with the narrative, the the kind of uh, uh, the the complexity of what we were doing with with the words in this game and how they were being uh, put together essentially and and the and the volume of content made it so that the way that we've been able to localize our games in the past was just not uh, possible at least not without like severe uh, compromises to the quality so we made uh, the decision to uh, not localize the game it will only be uh, in English at launch uh, for for those reasons it was just the the only way we could have like our options would have been you know like severely compromised uh quali we've yeah. never first of all we've never localized uh, our our voiceover that was something that uh for many reasons uh, in the past we just haven't been able to do uh because of the the way it's scripted how how closely the 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 timing uh, matters and how how that just doesn't necessarily uh mm -hmm. carry over uh if you translate it um and and so yeah the That's pyre will be available in english uh only um, and uh, though you know be, beyond the initial launch, we'll 
we'll see how it goes and we'll continue to explore those options. We didn't feel that it was worth kind of indefinitely delaying the game to chase after. Uh, we, we didn't want to reduce the scope of the ambition of yeah. what the narrative was doing. Uh, and we didn't want to indefinitely delay the game for something that we didn't even know would even be possible. Yes. Uh, so that's kind of where we ended up with that. Yep. People, uh, people want to know if Ashley... Uh, Ashley has that. Whoa, here we go. Oh, we wow. got the rare full white. <laughs> yeah. This is Pyra at its finest. Take a moment to, uh, to uh, consider all of your <laughs> misdeeds. Yeah, Ashley, Ashley Barrett's involvement. Uh, yeah, you know, we've said uh, before that uh, everyone, you know, all everyone who worked on uh, Bastion, who then worked on Transistor, we consider Ashley uh, an, an integral part of that group that, that gave our previous games their distinct identity, so you can uh, you can look forward to her uh, involvement in this game as well. In fact, if you watch our original launch trailer, uh, or n not our launch, tra our reveal trailer, reveal rather, trailer, yeah. with a, a song called "In the Flame," uh, the first piece of music that that uh, we we released for the game, you she is she is there uh, even in that track uh, faintly. So so that that sort of uh, subtly gave away her involvement, but you can look forward to more from from her and and lots more from uh, Darren Korb, our, our composer and audio director. Yeah, we mentioned before, the soundtrack is going to be uh, available there at launch. It's our biggest uh, soundtrack ever by by a pretty sizable margin, in keeping with the fact that the campaign itself is our is our biggest campaign ever. Yeah, some people are asking about uh, additional characters, or are there more playable races? There are more playable yeah. races. People want to know specifics about some characters, um, and we're just uh, we're hoping to keep most of that stuff uh, a surprise for you, so that when you <laughs> when you play the campaign, you can you can experience it firsthand uh, yourself. So um, aspects and qualities of all the all the other characters in the game, we're hoping um, uh, you will you will experience firsthand uh, when yeah. you get a chance to try out the campaign. Yeah, we've revealed uh, one uh, one new character today, uh, and and kind of her her race as well, and how. Uh, that, that's uh, Pamatha, who's who's this uh, winged character. We don't have her uh, in this particular rite, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, Pamatha. Uh, in addition to kind of uh, being very, she's different in in every respect from all these other characters, and and uh, she's she's kind of uh, expressive of how just how varied uh, the 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 kind of gameplay of the different races mm -hmm. is. And there's yeah, as you could see, uh, if you saw the the kind of character select screen previously. There's 20 plus mm -hmm. uh, characters, and uh, there so there's quite a bit of uh, different races and things uh, to which they belong, and that's that's all just a big a big part of the setting and the and the story and everything. Yeah, um, there's a uh, there's a question here. It says, "I trust Greg's kids, who seem to be pretty cool from his Twitter. <laughs> have his kids play the game, and do they like it? This is important. Yeah, to me. Uh, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Yeah, yeah. I, I have uh, I have. Two kids, you know, both grown old over the course of the, this game's <laughs> development. Uh, one is a uh, one is six, one is uh, eleven, and and they actually do. Uh, it's it's a really they were too young. Um, like during Transistor's development, they you know they weren't super aware of it, but now they're both at an age where they can uh, enjoy this game. That you know the six year old can't like handle uh, all the there's. Uh, like the the story and stuff is a little much for him maybe <laughs> but he loves the versus mode and he's like he's pretty good at it he's super proud of having kicked my butt at it one time i i let it <laughs> if he watches this uh, 20 years down the line i let you win <laughs> uh but but uh, yeah and 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 my my daughter you know i i uh she got she she was uh, she provided a really good sign to me that aspects of the narrative were working as hoped it mm -hmm. put it, it got her into some situations where she was asking all the kind of questions that we hope players will ask. Some of the stuff we were alluding to before of like there's a variety of gameplay and kind of narrative emotional considerations that will sometimes put you in a maybe in a you know, to some extent a dilemma, but you'll have to decide kinda of how you feel about certain situations. Yeah. We don't as you've played from our if you played our previous games, you know we don't necessarily like to make things super cut and dried for you. Uh, we don't see the world in, as like just straight up good versus evil or whatever. Things are usually a little more complicated than that, and we like for our games uh, to, to kind of uh, express so, that and let you explore different perspectives. So I think that's probably um, yeah. the last right we're going to show. We're going to answer one more question before we wrap up, which is just sort of how does the gameplay you've seen here today in versus mode fit into the campaign? 
Um, and that's something we sort of set the stage for at the beginning, but if maybe you tune in later or uh, just would like to hear it uh, in more detail, maybe we can talk to them about how the rights they're a part of um, uh, fit, yeah. into, fit into the actual uh, narrative and the, what they ex- maybe paint a picture of what the experience of the campaign is like. Yeah, this is, this is essentially like if you think of this game as an RPG, uh, which we consider a party-based RPG, what you're seeing here is essentially the battle system uh, when you, you have to kind of work your way across this uh, mystical purgatory setting to, to kind of get into these uh, battles against other adversaries whose own freedom is at stake. So each time you prevail or you fail at one of these rites, you step closer uh, to being able to kind of go free again or not. And that's kind of the main, uh, without giving too much away, that's kind of the, the framework of what the campaign is all about. So you you get into these different situations, you meet new characters, you meet new adversaries, your characters gain an enlightenment, gain access to new abilities. You kind of mix and match them in different ways. The story takes its various twists and turns, all that kind of stuff. So that's that's kind of how the, the campaign is structured. And in versus mode, you could just kind of pick any of the different characters, including uh, adversaries who you can't play as in the campaign and, and yeah, throw down with your friends or against uh, the computer and, and have at it. So when the stars align the rights shall come to bear Illuminate the signs The exiles shall be there All are not the same But three shall 